I'm Dave Ortega from Somerville Media Center, and I'm happy to be joined with Jen Atwood, who's the Executive Director of East Somerville Main Streets. Hi, Jen. Hi, Dave. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, of course. It, it, I, I was just saying it's been a while, and uh, it, I know that that's because you're you're very busy with all the various aspects of what the of what East Somerville Main Streets does uh, for the for the businesses and organizations in your area. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna touch on a few things this morning, um, and the first thing I want to touch on is uh, how you've highlighted uh, Black-owned businesses in your area. Um, there's a section on on the East Somerville Main Street's website where you can see each of them. Um, yeah, why, why don't you uh, talk about that a little? Yeah, so thank you um, for highlighting that because it's just something that obviously with the current Black Lives Matter movement more in like the, the national news currently, I thought it was a uh, important um, opportunity for us to be able to also highlight our black owned businesses in East Somerville. Um, as you know, like East Somerville is the most diverse community in, in Somerville. So we actually have a large percentage of minority owned, immigrant owned, um, black owned businesses in this side of the city. So I think that they never get enough publicity and recognition. So if there was ever a time to tell those stories, it's it's now. Um, and so we highlighted a few different ones, um, including like very well known, like the Sika, um, which is the, the Ethiopian restaurant. Yeah, the food is so fantastic. And Mr. D over there is such like, a kind soul. Um, and one of the things I didn't get to mention in the highlight, but uh, recently he came out to the library in February and did um, and spoke about Ethiopian culture and cooking and it was just a fantastic event and like the little library we have in East Somerville was like packed full of people yeah. um, so it was just like a really nice heartwarming moment and just to continue to recognize that that it's such an important business to this community um, unfortunately he's not able to open but he does have a secondary restaurant in Roxbury that's currently open so if people wanted to support his business they can order takeout from Roxbury location it's not that far so um, you can still get fantastic Ethiopian food from there. Is he planning to reopen the Somerville location? Um, not at this moment probably eventually it's not closed for good hopefully um, fingers crossed with everything going on it's just um, he doesn't really like even doing like a limited capacity opening is not really viable to maintaining that business site. So for now he's like choosing to focus on this other location that tends to get a little bit more traction and foot traffic. So um, hopefully we'll see a comeback in East Somerville, but um, for now it's going to be closed. And then um, yeah, some of the other some of the other businesses. Yeah, so um, the other some of the other highlights I have um, newer businesses that have come um, in the past like year or year and a half. Um, there's been two hair, two three actually hair places um, that are black owned businesses, including Fidel African Hair Braiding, mm -hmm. which is more closer to the Charlestown Lion Street. Um, they recently relocated to East Somerville from Cambridge. And um, they're open and available right now. Um, and the two others, so there's a barber, um, there's the barber's name is Smiley, but the business name is Hair Engineer and it's on Lincoln Street. And he's currently taking appointments. And Bonita Hair Salon is also uh, taking appointments. She opened, um, she does fantastic like blowouts. So if anyone's looking to kind of like do um, like their hair up a little bit more fancy with the curls. She does a fantastic job. She also does all different hair types, which I also think is like a fantastic feature to her business. Um, she has worked in like all of like the high end places in Boston. So having someone with that skill, like open a place in East Somerville is like, we we're really excited um, about that. So she's also taking appointments and her name is Nyla. She's the one that opened Bonita's hair salon. She also speaks Spanish, which I think is also like incredibly cool. <laughs> awesome. Um, the, the last business I see here is Instant Shoe Repair on by Right, can't get forget Sammy. Yeah, so they don't really have a huge online presence. It's more of like, if you live in the community, almost, I think most people know of Sammy because it's such a convenience to have him uh, in, within the business district. 
and he does all kinds of repairs. So he does shoe repairs, luggage repairs, um, handbag repairs. So I think like not only is the fact that he's like fast, reliable, he's one of the few businesses that still does that kind of work. Um, there you don't, it's hard to find nowadays someone that does those kinds of repairs and he's, um, He's still there, which is fantastic. And we hope to keep him um, as part of the business district. And you can, he's open now for appointments. So if you need something repaired, um, you can give him a call. I also think it's like important to highlight the fact that it's an environmental concern too, like in terms of waste, like having something upcycled or recycled is like, we all should be doing that um, these days. So I don't think that gets enough play either. But um, so those are, five fantastic businesses that everyone should be supporting right now. Yeah. And if anybody wants to reach out to them or, or see this list, they should go to the Somerville Main Street's website where they could see and support all yeah. of those businesses. Um, and we hope to highlight um, one or all of them uh, in, the, in the near future um, in, a, in an update such as this. Um, so thank you for that, Jen. And um, now we want to shift to talking about the reopening process uh, up to now. Uh, you know, we've kind of seen the, the phased uh, reopening that the state put out a few weeks ago, and then um, the city put out their own uh, openings. And so the businesses and uh, restaurants have been adjusting um, to try to, to um, uh, accommodate the requirements. Um, so uh, take it away, Jen. How's that yeah, going? so I think it's happening. I mean, we knew it was coming, but it's also like um, faster than we were initially thinking it was going to happen, at least at the city and local level. Um, but we are trying to keep up. It seems like the city's trying to keep up with the state schedule. Um, and so as of today, uh, limited indoor dining is allowed. Um, so you'll start seeing some of the businesses allow for that. Um, and as of last week, uh, you probably also have noticed a lot of places are doing in outdoor dining. Um, and the city is trying to accommodate the fact that, you know, the businesses that are going to be opening at a limited capacity. So trying to adjust for uh, more outdoor seating and new outdoor seating that we haven't seen before. Um, and so it's kind of exciting because you get to see some businesses that have never done outdoor seating starting to do outdoor seating and some really kind of um, innovative ideas happening. So um, before this call, I was just talking about Mount Vernon, um, which is the oldest restaurant in Somerville. They have a parking lot behind the restaurant that they've set up like a circus tent um, in and put all their seating outside. And we, there's, uh, we also did a mural with that back parking lot last year. So the timing worked out. So that space out there looks amazing and um, makes it an a really beautiful outdoor dining experience that we've never had before um, in the city that Mount Vernon's never done before. So it's kind of exciting to see that. Um, and some other places like recently, as of yesterday, Gao Chao Brazilian Cuisine is now doing um, outdoor dining, uh, not on the sidewalk, but in the street, in the parking areas, which these little parklets are starting to pop up, which is also kind of exciting to see and makes our streetscape look I think more appetizing and appealing to pedestrian traffic and hopefully will make people feel more comfortable um, patronizing some of these businesses that have been struggling for so long and could use the business. Yeah. Like personally, I think um, that stretch of Broadway is like one of the most beautiful streets in Somerville aesthetically. Um, so yeah, like hearing you talk about parklets, like uh, livening uh, it up and making it even more appealing, you know, uh, that sounds really great, yeah. uh, especially as a way to to support these businesses that are reopening. Yeah, um, I mean, some of them that have done like traditional outdoor seating have had to make adjustments because the new requirements, obviously, with like six feet of distancing mm -hmm. between the tables and also six feet of distancing between the tables and someone that's maybe walking past the tables. And so that makes things really tricky. And in Somerville, we're really limited by the width of our sidewalks. And we're lucky that in East Somerville, um, back in 2007, there was a big infrastructure improvement that widened all the sidewalks. So we actually, I think, have some of the widest sidewalks in the city outside of maybe assembly. But um, I think that that's enabled our businesses to kind of take advantage of that um, a little bit more. Um, however, there's still not enough space um, walking wise, even with our wide sidewalks, to do that much outdoor seating on the sidewalk. So that's why it's been really important that the city's allowed us to take those parking spaces up, which is great. 
Right. And then in some of the conversations that I've had with uh, business owners, they're, they're doing this kind of cost benefit analysis, um, you know, to even, it, it doesn't make sense for them to reopen in this limited way or right. are they, is, is the loss of money just too much? Exactly. Like it's, if you're at like a, like a 20% capacity, if that, um, and you're not even sure if you're going to fill those seats that you have made available now, um, it's almost not worth like being open still. Um, so that's why you see like, probably like we were just talking about Fasica, like they haven't quite opened even for outdoor seating yet. And I think it's, it's partially because of that, because they, they know that they wouldn't be able to like pay the staff and the cost of food and the overhead that they need um, with just the limited amount of business they would see from like a couple seats outside. So it's really, it really depends on kind of your location a lot. Um, I was just talking to Vinny's and they said, well, we could do outdoor seating if we could get the side street, but it's unlikely the city would approve of that. So it's, it's as big right now. It's, um, it's really stressful on these businesses uh, to kind of figure that out um, while they're also trying to stay afloat at the same time. So it's just these past two weeks have been intense for everyone um and definitely the city staff as well i think they're tired of hearing from me but they um i i, I try to like remind myself of how overwhelmed everyone is right now um yeah. and that they've done a really great job of reassigning some of the staff to like try to cover the need um and with like i'm sure they're just being completely inundated right now with requests of trying to make it work um and so it's just trying to remind myself to be patient um, and can, and like everyone's overwhelmed right now. I think yeah, that's something yeah. I should deal with. <laughs> and they have been like, I was having a conversation with somebody about like the sustained stress that everybody has been feeling from beginning of this since mid March or before that with some individuals. Yeah. And so businesses have an extra layer of stress on top of the personal stress, you know, like, you know, doing yeah. this came up in a call with Union Square Main Streets, how we haven't really acknowledged the mental health component of the like forced reopening process um, on the businesses themselves. Yeah. Because if you think about it, they're taking their staff and their own lives at risk by serving the community at a time when they're still, it's still risky to be out in the public and exposing your staff and to a large amount of people going through your business at any given day. So I feel like on top of the fact that they're trying to make their business work, they're also dealing with other things right now. Um, and so I encourage anyone that's definitely continue to patronize the business and support them, but also like keep in mind that they're dealing with a lot right now and try to be as patient and considerate as you can um, in these trying times um, for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not uncommon at this moment. Um, and what certainly what we want to avoid seeing is is closures of restaurants. Um, every every week I see some storied institution um, close. I think last weekend it was Cafe Pomplona, which really kind of got to me in, in Harvard Square. I, I It's a little like a uh, cavernous um, coffee shop that I used to love to go to. So um, yeah, I think we'll see. I'm really concerned about when the moratorium on evictions is lifted at the state level, mm. um, because I have a I have a sinking feeling we'll see more of those those announcements come through when that happens. Um, so the East Somerville pickup market, <laughs> uh, how how is that going? That this is an initiative that you had started a few weeks ago, uh, where people place an order with a local business, and then on on Sundays. Uh, they go over to the the park. Dino's parking lot. So yeah, so we actually started the initiative up in May, and we've been running every Sunday, um, and we'll continue to run it. We've decided to continue it through August, um, and it's sort of modeled off a farmers market, although it's more like independent entrepreneur businesses that are just kind of starting up. Um, which is kind of, it's been exciting because I'm getting a lot of feedback from those businesses telling me that you know, they didn't have any concept of where to kind of start amidst like getting their business going amidst all the other crises that are happening right now. And so this was like a nice opportunity to them for them to like vet their products with customers and start the process of like, you know, developing their product and ordering system and um, thinking about strategically how they're going to get going even while everything else is going on. So it's exciting. And every week we've seen new vendors kind of get added to the market. So now we have, um, we in addition to tamales and pierogies, cookies, bread, soup, 
uh, pasta, obviously, because Dino's is also, not only are they hosts, but they're also one of the vendors. Um, we had ice cream last week, which was exciting. Gracie's ice cream was there. Mm -hmm. And then um, we also have a new black owned vendor, a black owned business vendor who's um, doing this really cool granola product. Uh, that is you bake it at home. So she provides you like a kit and you make it at home so you can add as little or as much sugar uh, or other aspects into it. Like if you really like coconut or chocolate, you can add it in. Or if you are trying to like limit your sugar intake, you can um, uh, you can choose something else to include and then you bake it at home and it makes your house smell wonderful. So we're really excited to see it kind of um, take it from like this pivoting of not being able to do events, but trying to help the business community and the residents into this new kind of pilot market. And since then it's just kind of continued to grow and we're excited to be able to continue to offer it to the community. So we hope everyone continues to support it by placing orders with the businesses. Um, if, uh, if people are interested, they should go to easternrivalmainstreets.org website slash market. Um, and you'll be able to find the list of participating businesses each week. And you can place your orders in by Thursday at 5 is recommended. Some businesses still take orders in past that. And then just show up on Sunday and pick up your orders. Um, it's a great opportunity to not have to shop at a supermarket, which everyone, I think, would appreciate right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 fabulous. So, how many how many vendors uh, do you have at this point? Oh my gosh, I think we have around ten vendors, maybe more. Um, it kind of it changes a little bit week to week, but um, I think we're we're sitting around ten to twelve. Mm. Yeah, and it it sounds like this is a format that um, that you this is like the new normal. You have to sign up, um, place your order, and then you you wait in a socially distanced, responsible line. And then, uh, you know, interact with the vendor in, a, in in the very limited way that we've come to expect. Um, yeah. But it's still face to face and it's still yeah. engaging with the community and supporting the community, which is awesome. Yeah, we're not seeing the crowds that you would say see at like Bow Market or even the Union Square Farmers Market. So we haven't had to like really worry about lining up so much. Like it's a two hour window and people come and go. And um, we do set out like, so, like distancing markers. So if they're was like two people or more than um, like multiple people picking up at the same time, then definitely like there's spacing for that. And we're lucky to have the Dinos be able to host us in their very large parking lot. It gives us lots of space. Um, but I think that it's just, yeah, it's just safer. Um, and you get to support like small businesses that are trying to get going, which I yeah. think is, you can't put a dollar value on that. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And uh, these, these, uh, did you have anything uh, else to add in this update? Nope. That's it. That's it. That's just, uh, we are kind of looking, it's our, our fiscal year's ending because at the end of June, we're looking at what we're going to be able to do in the next year, um, knowing that we're probably not going to be able to do events this year, which is, I think, what most people know us by. So um, just to kind of let people know that we are still operating, but we're shifting more to supporting the business community through this crisis rather than doing the public events um, because we see that the value in the work right now is, is needed. So that's what we're up to. And that's great work. Um, they, the, those, these, these businesses appreciate it and uh, the community appreciates it. So actually I do have one more update. Yes. I'm so sorry. I'm like, <laughs> All over the place. No, go ahead. Um, <laughs> so uh, as you may have known or seen, we're doing these porch portraits. Um, our My board president, Devin Moose, started this as a project to keep busy and not feel overwhelmed right now. Um, and so we've done like hundreds of them across the city. And um, if people donate as part of the exchange of getting a set of porch portraits done, uh, we use that that funds to purchase PPE for the businesses. So we've been creating um, personal uh, protective equipment packages, care packages for each business. They get 150 gloves, 150 masks, 50 gloves, um, some face shields, and 75% uh, hand sanitizer. So it helps them with their reopening process, and you get kind of a nice commemorative photo set to document this so strange time that we're in right now. So I recommend people. Again, going to the website and looking under porch portraits, and you'll be able to schedule one if you're interested. That's great. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jen. 
uh, Jen Atwood, the executive director of East Somerville Main Streets. Uh, this was a, a very substance filled uh, business update. And, uh, <laughs> take care, Jen. Yeah, thank you. Have a good one.